Welcome to a new episode of my High Performance Java Persistence video course. In this episode, we're going to talk about JDBC statement fetch size. This is a lesser known thing. Uh, most of the time when we're using JPA Hibernate, and nowadays you're not even using directly JP, uh, JPA, you're using Spring Data, uh, JPA. Uh, we kind of we it, we tend to uh, forget that underneath everything uh, everything flows uh, through JDBC and there are some things uh, which are fundamental but and if you and if we don't uh, know about them uh, then we are going to lose some opportunities or, uh, to optimize the code or we are going to misuse some features like uh, for instance it's the case of uh, streaming. And one of these is this statement, uh, the JDBC statement has this fetch size property. And we will see that uh, depending on the underlying JDBC driver, uh, you could either set it, uh, either uh, mandatory to set it, or we can just skip it and set it uh, only on some specific use cases. And for instance, uh, if you're using Oracle, the default statement fetch size is 10. So what does it mean? It means that if you're running a query and you select 100 uh, records, if, you, if the result set has 100 records, the driver has to go 10 times to the database in order to, to fetch all the data. However, uh, if you're using JP and Hibernate, you are always going to consume all that data. It's just that you are going to go uh, 10 times to, to the database to fetch it because the result set is always traversed by Hibernate in order to give you, to give you a list of DTOs or entities. So if you're using Oracle, it's a good idea to, to change this uh, default statement fetch size and try to increase it to 50 or 100 or something like that. Also, you have to keep in mind that if you're uh, using, if you're using Oracle and you started a project, let's say, five, 10 years ago, there's a very good chance that you haven't updated the JDBC driver because most of the time that rarely happens. Uh, the thing is that just like any other framework or program or system, uh, even the driver itself is being updated from time to time. And uh, there are bugs that are fixed, there are optimizations that are being done uh, to the driver. And uh, it's, uh, what's nice about uh, this Oracle driver is that even if you're using uh, an older Oracle version, you can still use a newer JDBC driver and it's still, it's still going to work because it's both forward and backward compatible. Now, why would you want to do that? For instance, in this case for Oracle, since Oracle 12, there's a much better memory allocation scheme using by the driver. So that's, uh, that's why uh, I uh, reminded you about this. Now, if you're using SQL Server, I'm going to mention the default Microsoft JDBC driver. Uh, previously, uh, if you've been using SQL Server with Java, um, there's a chance that uh, you might uh, have used uh, the JTDS driver. Now it's no longer needed because uh, the default Microsoft driver is now open source. It's on GitHub and it's being uh, maintained. Uh, the default statement fetch size in this uh, in this case is 128, which is uh, not bad. It's, and uh, the SQL Server uses also adaptive buffering so that uh, uh, it doesn't have to use uh, uh, um, a fixed window size of 128. So by default, it, there, uh, it's not necessary. Uh, it's, it's not really necessary to change uh, this statement fetch size. Now, for, Postgres, for PostgreSQL, which is a, is a very popular open source database, uh, by default, everything, if you're running a query, everything is being prefetched on the JDBC driver. So there's only a single database round trip that fetches all the data. Even if you don't uh, iterate the resource set, you're still go going to get uh, all of it. Because of this, you want, uh, if you're using get resource stream, as we will see towards the end of this uh, workshop, uh, you might want to, uh, you, you, you might want to, to change this strategy. Otherwise, you are going to get all the data, even if you're not going to consume all of it from uh, from from the stream. In the same uh, this in the, in the same way, the MySQL driver prefetches everything just like PostgreSQL. So if you want if you want to stream, if you're using uh, Java streams or the Hibernate scroll method, then in that case uh, you have two options: either you are setting the fetch size to integer minimum value, uh, which according to the documentation they say that they are going to uh, stream. Uh, only one entry at a time. In reality, there is some prefetching going on there, but basically that's uh, the principle 
um, that it works. Or, or for instance, if you're also setting the use cursor fetch connection property, then you have the option to, to set uh, uh, a custom fetch size. For instance, you can give a value of 50, and then you are going to uh, get from the database 50, 50 mm -hmm. entries uh, at a time. So basically that's uh, how this statement fetch size works uh, behind the scene. Now, if you're using Hibernate, the advantage uh, that you have is uh, you can see there is only one property, a global property that you can set and you can override the default fetch size. Now, for if you're using Postgres and MySQL, probably you don't want to do that, but for Oracle, it's a good idea to increase the default fetch size, which is just then to something that's uh, uh, larger, like 50 or 100. And for instance, if you're using uh, streams, you also want to, to give a custom fetch size on a per query basis uh, because you don't want to, for instance, if you're using uh, MySQL, you don't want to prefetch uh, everything because uh, that can lead to all sorts of problems like out of memory issues or um, garbage collection issues. Now, why I mentioned this is because uh, the statement fetch size uh, has a significant impact. For instance, in this, what you see now on the screen, uh, the, there, there is a test case which fetches 10,000 records and if you vary the fetch size from 1 to 10, 100, 1,000 and 10,000 you can see that the response time decreases significantly. Why? Because for the first uh, for the first one when the fetch size is 1 it needs 10,000 round trips but then if the fetch size is 10 you are going to need 1,000 round trips. You are going to save nine nine times or you are going to uh, fetch everything uh, with 90% uh, less uh, be, uh, uh, less round trip. So that's why you can see that the fetch, uh, fetch size dec uh, decreases significantly. So basically, what you have to keep in mind here is that uh, if you're using Oracle, it's a good idea to, to uh, increase the statement fetch size. Otherwise, it might take uh, multiple round trips and that uh, could uh, hurt uh, performance. If you like this video, you are going to love my high performance Java Persistence video course. For more details, go to my blog vladmihalcha.com and check out the courses page. If you're struggling with data access performance issues, this video course will teach you how to get the most out of JP and Hibernate. You can buy either the recorded online workshops or the video course lessons. You have unlimited access to the course material and 30 days money back guarantee. If you are curious what other people think about the video course lessons, then you should definitely read the testimonials I got from my students. Thank you for watching this video and enjoy running your data access layer at high speeds.